The finish on this table got messed up two different times, but not from what you might expect. We're starting off with two slabs of salvaged Canadian black walnut, and as always, we begin by debarking the pieces. So not only are we peeling off the large chunks of bark, but then we go at the edge with a wire wheel to remove that cambium layer that's on the edge of the tree. Uh, when we were first starting off with these river tables, like six or seven years ago, our first few pours, we never removed the bark. And like my third pour ever, I remember it was walnut, had lots of bark in it. I stuck it in the planer as one piece and it came out the other side as three with a chunk of resin with bark stuck on either edge. So I redid the pour without doing anything to the pieces of wood, planed it again, and it still happened, but this time there was that thin skin of cambium. So that's how we learned like seven years ago that it's very important to remove all of your bark. From there, we're using our skill saw to cut these slabs down to their size so that they fit in the mold. This client has requested a river table, so that consists of the pieces of wood being on the outside edge of the table, and we turn those live edges in to face each other just to play off the negative space created by the two pieces of wood. So once we've got the pieces cut down to their final size and flattened to their rough thickness, we can get them lifted into the mold. This is always a time we're very fortunate to have a shop full of guys, because if we had to lift these in all by ourselves, it wouldn't be as easy. Uh, we've done it before, but we definitely appreciate our guys in a time like this. And it's like we've done this a couple times before or something because the slabs actually went in on their first try. And I'm not making a joke, we've, we've actually, more often than we'd like to admit, have to recut these two or three times. And now we can begin mixing up the resin for our base layer. So this resin has quickly become coined manganello blue because it's what Joe used for the base layer in his table. And it's made using all of our black forest pigments. So we use royal blue, evening sunset and steel gray and it's a pretty even mixture of those three pigments and that will give you this really rich dark blue color. This is only going to be poured as a base layer so we're going about a half an inch deep with this pour and once it's cured we're going to come along and pour a clear layer over top of it. There's a few reasons why we do this. The first and most obvious one being is that it allows our client to achieve the desired color that they're after but because we're only pouring it half an inch thick, it also allows them to see the live edge through the pour. If we were to pour this same color, the full thickness, you might still see some of the outline of that live edge, but you're not gonna see any of the detail. And then the final thing that it does is it's also gonna hide the mounting plates for the legs that we're putting on this table. This client has selected our standard square steel frames that we offer, and what those consist of is three quarter inch by four inch steel welded up into a square, and then there's a quarter inch top plate that goes across those legs. So if we didn't have this opaque layer on there, you would see that through your pour, which is not necessarily a bad look. We've built many tables like it, but not every client is gonna wanna see that. After curing for one week in the mold, we can come along and get this piece popped out of the form. So. With our Black Forest Deep Resin, no matter the thickness, seven days is very standard for a cure time. Sometimes it could cure quicker if you have too warm of, of an environment. And if you're too cold, like below 15 degrees Celsius, you can extremely delay the cure. But even in a cold environment, you're never gonna fully prevent it. Once that temperature comes back up, it will cure just like normal. Then we can get the piece lifted downstairs using our forklift. We can get all our guys again to get this lifted onto our CNC machine and now we can remove that excess layer of resin that was left from our pour. We often get questions about why we pour this excess layer of resin and a lot of people think that it's wasteful, but we do have a reason for it. By pouring this excess layer all at once, it allows us to fill in a majority of the cracks and voids in a single shot. Being that we're a manufacturing business and we're not doing this as a hobby in our spare time, one of our biggest costs is labor. So by doing that over pour, we save our guys time of having to go back on that slab and individually fill everything in all at once. Yes, we do have to spend a little bit more money on epoxy, but that ends up being cheaper than the extra labor. Once we've got the piece flattened on our CNC and through the drum sander, we can then take our track saw and cut this piece down to its final size. So with this track saw here, it's a little bit underpowered and we do end up having to take multiple passes to ensure we get a clean cut but it is nice in that we don't have to lift this table onto our panel saw. We can keep it where it is. Then once everything's down to size, we can use our Black Forest Coat Thin Resin and Black Forest CA glues to fill in any of those imperfections that we didn't get with that initial overpour. Then we're using a palm router with a 45 degree bevel bit just to soften all the edges on this table. 
Uh, we do offer various different edge treatments, but the 45 degree chamfer tends to be the most popular one. From there, we can head off to Jekko and begin applying the acrylic urethane finish on this piece. This is where the problems came in with this table. We ended up having to get this table resprayed. I think it was two different times, which is challenging for us. You know, not only does our customer end up having to wait longer, which we then have to explain that to them, but it also affects the cash flow of the business. You know, like I said earlier, this for us isn't just a hobby. We've got 20 people that we employ and they all expect a paycheck every two weeks. So if the table that they were working on doesn't get finished in time, it, it can get stressful. You know, we've never had our guys ever have to go without a paycheck and they never will. We will always be the last ones to get paid, but we need to ensure that we have good production flow so things are less stressful on us and easier financially. So immediately after spraying this coat, the guy who sprayed it said that he messed it up. So even though it looks pretty good here on camera, all of that finish ended up having to get sanded off, but we did get to see Arlo, so that was nice. So now we didn't get any content for this film, but we're gonna put some photos up on the screen here right now of the next issue with the finish that we had after he sanded that all off. So the one on this side of the screen here is a small, about toonie sized dent in the edge of the table. There's my Canadian showing through. Toonie's a Canadian coin. It's about that big. Uh, so that was something that Jekko unfortunately did. You know, everything else looked perfect um, besides one other spot. And then there was this dent on the edge. On the other side is that other spot I mentioned. This is something that we didn't even notice. Our client actually noticed when they came in and did the quality control. Uh, as they were running their fingers across the top, they felt this bump, this almost sharp point and there was just a little dust nib that got trapped in the finish and it was going to be enough so that if you were sliding a plate over it or a glass over it, it would actually cause it to bounce. So it seems like a really small detail and maybe like we're being too picky, but with the price that we're demanding for these pieces and what our clients are paying, we need to make sure we're giving them absolute perfection. So back to the finishers it went. So finally, third time's the charm, right? They got it all perfect. We can get the table wrapped up and take it back to our shop to put the ceramic coating on, which is gonna be very important in this case because you will see why in a little bit something happened when we were taking photos of this piece. So our ceramic coating is a product that's designed to go over an existing finish, whether it be a sprayed acrylic urethane like you're seeing here or an oil-based finish like our Black Forest Furniture Oil, Rubio, Osmo, anything like that. It essentially gives you a small protective layer that makes your surface hydrophobic, so all the water beads off, and it greatly increases the scratch resistance. Once we've got that ceramic coating done, we can put those square steel frames that I mentioned earlier onto the table. And here you can also see that top plate spanning across the resin, where now it's gonna be completely hidden because of the base layer. You'll also notice on these legs that our holes are slotted. That is something else that we do intentionally. It's something that accounts for the seasonal expansion and contraction of the wood. Large wooden slabs like this can move up to an eighth of an inch per foot of wood. So in this case, it's about a four foot wide table. There's about two to three feet of wood. There might be three eighths of an inch expansion and contraction between the most humid time of year and the driest time of year. So those slotted holes just let that table move freely without causing any tension. Then we can get the piece downstairs, outside, and begin getting ready to take our photographs. That was always my favorite thing. You just do this and then add toes, and it makes baby footprints. <laughs> On the school bus, that was all I would do. I like it. <laughs> we have a part? Yes. Good job. Okay. You back up the board, then. Why did you let a baby walk all over our table? <laughs> so since we don't get the pleasure of delivering this piece, we're simply going to be taking it to the designer's warehouse, who then they're going to go and set it up. We decided that we would set this table up outside to get some nice natural light for the photos. So we slowly lift it on with a forklift, and then we can use our threaded inserts to secure those legs into place. Now here is where something kind of went wrong. It started thundering and it started raining while we still had the table outside, but it ended up being the perfect time to showcase the hydrophobic effect that our ceramic creates. Now, this is probably what you're expecting would have screwed up our table, but it wasn't because like I said, we have that ceramic on there. So what it essentially does is that it just allows the water to bead up on the surface instead of laying flat and spreading out. 
So not only does it prevent it from absorbing into any of the pores, but it makes the cleanup of that much, much easier. So here you can see all those beads of water laying flat. And this is something we've never actually done before is blow them around. And it's quite satisfying because they roll around this on the surface like little glass marbles essentially. And here you can see is when you go to wipe it off, instead of leaving some big streak of water, they just fall right off on, onto the microfiber. And finally, in recap, here is a look at the finished product. So again, our client selected salvaged Canadian black walnut slabs, a manganello blue base layer, and solid steel square frames to support the tabletop. We really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we're doing our best to put as much effort as we possibly can into all these build videos. As I'm sure a lot of you have noticed, we've really focused on the full start to finish processes. And we have a lot of really cool builds coming up here in the future. Uh, one that stands out is a job down in Salt Lake City. It consists of a bed, a dining table, a desk, two benches, and a piece of wall art. And the client is having us go down to deliver everything. So we're extremely excited about that. Thank you all for your support, and we'll see you next time. So something else that we've put on our channel recently is the option for super thanks. It's just a new feature that YouTube's come out with. Uh, it gives you the option to donate a small fee and you get a special badge where you're, uh, it'll be shown in the comments, but it's just a way for you guys to support us. And you know, I know on because of the projects we build and maybe the look on social media, it comes across that we're this really big giant business, but we're not, you know, this is our office that we're in right now. Uh, there's like five people we have to squish into this room. So I sit over there. Sergey sits here at six, actually. Haley, the filmer, sits here. My cousin as well. My dad sits right over there. Ibrahim sits in here as well. And that's just because this is all the space we have. Um, we've got about 20 people that work for us. Uh, we've been around for 30 years, but we're not some big giant corporation. So my point with all of this is that every dollar helps and anything that comes through Super Thanks or anything that even comes from our YouTube ad revenue, we do our best to invest back into our YouTube channel. So that's why we have two full-time employees that work on this channel for you guys. And anything that comes in from Super Thanks, we'll work on getting uh, better cameras, we'll work on giveaways, and we're also gonna dedicate a section at the end of every video where your name's shown on the screen. So we appreciate you guys, and if you feel the need that you wanna show us you appreciate us, we're gonna show you recognition.